What is going on y'all? It's your boy Wisco Madman coming at you with another video. This time we're going to do a little kind of how to slash project following. I'm doing a epoxy headboard with some wood in it. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the wood that we got here. Just one piece of it. It's just a cut in half cedar log. I uh, got the slab from a place called Baldwin Hardwoods. Uh, and basically my point there is simply that um, the the slab piece all you got to do is find a lumber yard dude so um, next we're gonna go ahead and kind of show you what I did here for the form the form is what you're gonna pour your epoxy into so let's go ahead and flip this camera so you guys can see shit ton of Tyvek tape. Yes, my garage is just a slight mess. I just moved into this apartment, but working in this garage here. Um, that Tyvek tape, super, super, super shiny. The bottom piece, um, as you can see on the side here, that's just a um, MDF board, I think quarter inch. I just went ahead and did a quarter inch MDF for the bottom. And then we do Tyvek tape over the top because epoxy will stick to the um, MDF board. You can't just leave bare MDF because you might not get it off from what I've found. Um, this is my first time doing this project, so I can't say for certain from my own experience, but from what I've found, you probably wouldn't get it off. So there's that. Um, just two by fours for the sides. Uh, use silicone under the tape on all the corners. So like you see this corner here or any of the ledges Like down in that crease and shit all that I made sure that I had just a silicone, you know Something like this just a little silicone gun um, Made sure that it was hundred percent silicone uh, because from what I could find it won't stick to silicone just in case it works its way through that tape or anything. But um, something that uh, I had found they do different is all those corners and seams I covered with tape and kind of bent it over the corner. Instead, from what I found from other people that do more of these projects, you'll go ahead and wrap the Tyvek tape all the way around the MDF, then uh, all the way around your two by fours, each piece separately before you put the form together. Then you screw it all together, then you silicone the edges. So that would be a little different than how I put the tape over the top and covered the corners with it. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and fast forward and take a look at the process from here. At this point, we're just checking in. Yeah, I'm kind of sweating my ass off here, but uh, yeah. Um, it's taken me quite a long time. Like I said, uh, this is my first time doing this. So I'm trying to make sure that I do every step right. So I don't have a first time failure and I can actually say that the first time I tried it, I actually got it right. So this is what the first color looks like. That is iridescent blue. Nice looking. I didn't, if you can see, you can still see where it says Tyvek through that I wanted just a little bit of trans and that I think is about where I want to be um, it gives enough quality from the color you know the sparkliness and it's still gonna work I got two other blues a uh, Caribbean blue and a blue green that I'm gonna try to mix in to that as well as swirling a black through there so I didn't want to go too dark and have the iridescent completely destroy whatever chance I had at um, having that black work or any of that kind of stuff. And I can always do like a super small dark batch and it might do something. So um, like I said, iridescent blue, black diamond pigments. And uh, yeah, I'll check back in after I get some more batches done. I'll show you all the other colors. All right, so you all saw the iridescent blue. Now I've added two more blues to this. One looks a little more green, but nonetheless, 
So this is Caribbean blue that has got a beautiful lighter blue um, silver shine to it. And then the other one, which is supposed to be a chameleon color, and that's the blue green, which over the camera, I guess it kind of seems to look pretty good as far as a blue goes. Um, but with your own two eyes, it definitely looks a little more green to me. But yeah, so that's where we're at now. I have one more color that I'm looking to add. I just wanted to verify that I had everything sealed up. We'll show you that in a second, but I'll show you this color. The color is black metallic. So if I can get light on it without shining you guys, that's kind of the black metallic as you can see. And mind you, the one thing I can recommend to y'all that if you have issues, or when you're doing this, don't slack on clamps. I got four, and let me tell you, I am struggling with a full-on headboard size um, trying to get this thing secured. I had to uh, go ahead and silicone all the edges because I was trying to do an outside layer. As you can see, the outside layer has some leakage and whatnot that was post having, but I think it'll be okay as long as I let the center cure a little bit first, clean up the silicone, make sure the edges, obviously the epoxy is not going to stick to silicone. So I don't want any silicone left over when I apply those outside edges, which I plan to do um, black and purple, I think. But yeah, we'll see where we're at by the time this um, gets there right now. I think we're elapsed about three hours or so of work um, and I plan on eh, Two more hours of actual like legitimate work. We're just about wrapped up for this process right now um, I'll let it cure some more um, they say get uh, Play-doh or uh, peanut butter consistency on it so you get that peanut butter consistency to the epoxy and then you can start swirling it. So yeah, uh, I'll check back in with you guys in a little while. What's going on everybody? So a little update at this point, we're looking at the frame that I've sanded all down. Yeah, my garage is a mess, don't mind that. But go ahead and look at this. So far we got partially pre-stained, pre-treated for stain, and all sanded down. So if you guys, if I mentioned it earlier, which I believe I did, um, that center bit there, I'll back up, that center bit there where the can is and where there's still some stain in there, that where my epoxy, which we'll update you on that in just a second, is going to be inserted still in the mold here yeah so if you see cut and sand I wrote on there just to remind myself not to try to hit that off when I get around to it this has been you know I've been working 50 60 hours a week so we're probably a week two weeks since the last piece of this video that I recorded but this is stuck down as you can see this is stuck down. That one I could probably knock off if I wanted to, but I don't want to crack anything. And this one is stuck on there. So all I'm gonna do is do something simple like this. Go ahead and cut where it's all um, connected there. And then I'll go ahead and just sand it down. Show y'all probably in the next portion here um, what it looks like after I get it done. But yeah, you just cut it as smooth as you can. Sand her down. I gotta sand the epoxy anyway. You know, there's bubbles and shit in there, so I will update y'all in a little bit. Point, um, I've taken all the screws out of the bottom here and out of the corners that's holding all the wood together. Um, the only thing that really is holding it together at this point is what, where it's stuck to the epoxy and um, the silicone uh, filler, I guess. Of the, more epoxy, whatever. But I'm gonna go ahead and tap this off now and you guys can kind of watch as I speed myself through this. 
And if I didn't mention it, this is a uh, rubber mallet, um, not a metal one of any sort. I'm trying to take it easy. I do have a handheld sledge if I need it, but hopefully I won't. Good old stuck shit. <laughs> You know, overall, you just don't want to be, you don't want to be smashing on the epoxy at all, obviously. We don't want to crack the epoxy. Hopefully I can pull this off, being that it's my first time. Um, and, you know, don't get too excited. Just take your time. Keep on pounding. <clears throat> Look like it, so it's just attached to my fucking silicone. As soon as I wake, it's be a good day. Hand on a spun, nothing in my way. Devil my cup. That one came off easy. <laughs> oh, it's not my way. I be so searching in the weeds all day. So, you know, cut off the bottom portion of it. But that was all lined with Tyvek, as I told you guys earlier. Oh, oh. To get one side, she's awful easy. Oh, yeah, that is super fucking easy. I am absolutely loving this dude. I'm like a fucking kid in the candy shop right now, just seeing this turn out halfway decent. Like, so fucking happy. So, here's an example of why we don't want to do dumb shit like that. So, it'll still work. It's not the end of the world. I took out a little bit, but if you go ahead and hammer the shit out of it, see that chunk there? That's a chunk of my cedar wood that's supposed to be attached still to that. And this is what happens the way we prevent that is obviously wrap this clamp beam that I was using in Tyvek tape so it's not a problem. I didn't do that. Obviously paid the price because it was attached and then I paid the price for not being patient by not just cutting it and then sanding it down to prevent that. But no big deal. It's only a little bit. It'll give the cedar wood a little bit more character. You know, being the first time, not that big of a deal. Days while I'm sitting, getting too big. Pull the 57 Belair right out of my driveway. Sliding down main, top down, sun shining like I'm headlining the main stage in the go. I'm too high right now to be out. So, that's pretty much it. That's all the sides. And uh, I'll give you guys an update in a little bit, alright? So, at this point, I've gotten the uh, board cut off there. Obviously, there's still that chunk. That ugly chunk will be gone. Don't have to worry about that. That's just going to get sanded down. But that's how that looks like. This time I gave it a little natural light from the outside so you could kind of see it. Neat little, about one inch thick or so, I think. This is the headboard that I didn't show you in the last video. That was already done in the last portion of the video. Um, that's all stained black, as you can see. <clears throat> that is pretty much where we're at so i'll go ahead and update you guys in a little bit longer once i've sanded it all down and whatnot still waiting on some uh some discs for my orbital sander i got like a 1500 grit and a 3000 grit and shit so i can make this epoxy all nice and smoothed out and whatnot take out all, all the bubbles and whatever that are left on the top so that's what i got for you all right guys next update here um not a whole lot of production quality in this one i've been quite busy but i got some time to work on it and i just wanted to update y'all on what's going on here so i uh got all these splotches all over you can kind of see 
the greenness all the way across that um, epoxy board there. That's just, I made a mini badge. Use this little little deal I found in my cupboard that I happen to have a syringe, so I didn't have to wait for one. But um, work and getting a dog, it's taken a little while. <laughs> We're probably two weeks since the last time I recorded here. So, um, but yeah, so just filled a couple holes here. And now I have to let it cure, go back to sanding again. I've been polishing and using, yes, Adam's Polish. Um, that's a local Colorado one here. But look at how insanely shiny that shit is. So if we look at the other side, I didn't finish yet. But kind of zooming out, it looks beautiful if you ask me. I think it's amazing. But let's see if I can find... Hopefully you can kind of tell, see some of the swirling and shit like that. Trying to work with the light here. Hey, I got a light on the camera. Look at that. My bad, guys. So, you can kind of see the, yeah, I'm having severe lighting issues. My bad, guys. But you can see the swirling there. See it? Right there. See the swirling there, 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 and then you get over here and you see the drastic difference. That's 3,000 grit over here. There you go, that's a great picture. 3,000 grit there, and just the start of polishing. We're not even done yet, but look at that wood, bro. So that, this, I went and I poured all over here, and then... Yes, yet another. This is a car polish head. I'm using car polish. That's kind of my own um, gig here. But as soon as that pad got wet or got all the compound on it, then rather than having all that polish that I laid out here and lay it on the wood, I just took the pad with it being kind of damp, no actual visible polish on it, and polished up there. That way... It didn't stain or nothing. Yeah, you see some darker spots. That's that's some of the epoxy from filling and whatnot. But I like it because it's character to me. And it's not visibly epoxy. Um, and, and you kind of look across and you see that's 3000 grit. I haven't gotten polished that yet. But even that, that's all the green swirls and shit. If you ask me, guys, at this point... It's looking pretty baller, but I don't want to keep this checking too long. All right, y'all, close to the last update here, but uh, go ahead and look at this flip around on the camera. I'll get a light for it. So, clear it now. Obviously, that's a little dusty from sawdust and epoxy dust and whatever, but we have effectively secured it on the headboard. Let me tell you. Finding a way to get those bolts to line up was not easy, guys. But I'll show you how it looks once I finally get. You can see there's no siding there. Um, I also have to fill in some gaps and shit, which will just be wood glue and stain. So, um, yeah, man. So I'll give you an update in a minute here. And the stain's still a little damp in spots, waiting on the... Uh, I did a little bit more of the walrus oil on the cedar there. But that's pretty much what we're looking at. Try to avoid the glare for you guys, but I'd love to be able to show you what kind of, you can kind of see some of that sparkle in there. Go super slow here for you. Yeah, man. Obviously a straight on. I get the glare of the light, but. So I know I called this a how to, and this is just basically my conclusion. Um, first off, if there's anything that I didn't cover in here, 
feel free to throw it down in the comments below. Um, I can always answer questions on what products I used, how I did this or that, or I can make another video to explain something a little better when it comes to epoxy. At this point, I feel very confident in being able to do another epoxy project and cut out a lot of the issues that I had along the way. Um, so let's cover some of the main issues, um, things that I would have done differently. And, um, let you guys kind of get out of here after watching this um, summary, but it really, this video more was watching me along my journey. The how-to part of it is more the comment section and stuff like that, anything that needs to be clarified. So first issue um, I want to cover is how you pour the epoxy. So something that I don't know how I space cadetted is... It, it seems pretty clear and I didn't realize it until I did it, but you want to have each of your epoxies, each different color, pre-mixed in five-gallon buckets. That's That w would be my recommendation. Um, I had several five-gallon buckets. I did each one at a different time. So what happens? They have different cure times. So to prevent that, Basically, do one giant batch of however much epoxy you need for the whole project. You're, you're going to figure it out. Um, like Jeff Max Supplies, um, I'll try to have all the links to everything in the description. Um, if I'm missing something, again, throw it in the comments. I will update it. Um, but Jeff Max Supplies is where I got most of my epoxy stuff. Um, Baldwin Hardwoods is the hardwood supplier. And Jeff Mac kind of had some helpful videos. Not complete, like, hey, this is how you do the whole project, but I used a piece by piece and different tutorials that they had to help me with the project. And for whatever reason, I didn't think about it. So they'll they'll have a calculator on there that kind of gives you an idea, okay, hey, this is how much you're probably going to need. That's actually how I dialed it back and made the project smaller because I was already at like 10 gallons of fucking epoxy and the shit's not cheap. I'm a broke boy, so... um. Yeah, I dialed her back a lot because I think I was pushing like 20 gallons that I would have had or 18 gallons, whatever, for this giant project that I was going to do. But that was also originally not going to be inserted into the headboard. I didn't have the headboard to begin with. Once I found out that I found a free headboard that's about a $1,400 headboard set, uh, headboard, footboard, sideboards, you know. Um, yeah, that actually benefited me quite a bit. So... Mix all the epoxy at once. Um, my suggestion would be to do your hardener and do your epoxy base. Um, obviously, if you're doing like 10 gallons, you'll have to do probably two or three five-gallon buckets. But do all 10 gallons at once, then separate it into however many colors that you want to do. Say you want to do five colors, get five different buckets, pour an uh, equal amount if that's what you want, or pour however much you want for each color into each of those buckets get your mixing done you can um i would say you could probably start your mixing prior to adding the pigment and then just add the pigment right at the back end and make sure you get enough mixing to get the pigment through all of it because it's not going to harden in five minutes I, I forgot how long the mixing was but i think it was something like five minutes of mixing or whatever just to make sure that you've mixed enough of the hardener in there that it's actually going to properly cure once you pour it. Um, you obviously need the pigment in there before you pour it. Um, I, I make comments like that because, uh, yeah, I should have had somebody make a comment that, hey, you might want to mix all the epoxy, all the epoxy you're going to use at the same time. This dipshit didn't know that, and that's why I ended up with purple top and bottom instead of black top and bottom because ultimately the way I poured it the purple came out and the black did not. And believe it or not, I think there's actually more black epoxy in there than there was purple. But because of the cure times, I guess the purple's what ended up coming out. Things all adjust in the future. Eventually this coffee table that I have my whole computer set up on, I'm going to make another one. And I can do another video when I do that. But these are things that I'm going to use for the smaller project of the coffee table. Um, which I guess doing a smaller project first might have been a better idea, but hey, I'm greedy and I wanted to, well, I shouldn't say greedy, but when I want something done, I just go for the big one. So um, what else? Moving on. So 
Um, I also mentioned, in addition to the mixing time, the black didn't come out the way I wanted it to, but it still looks pretty cool. Um, when you're doing fillers and stuff, um, heating, all that kind of stuff, pay attention to your time frames. When you pour this epoxy, you are going to want 48 hours, pick like a weekend or whatever, you're going to want 48 to 72 hours that you can really, whenever it needs it, go in there, heat gun it, do whatever you need to do because I did not heat gun very much at all. It caused an awful lot of bubbles. It caused extra work in sanding the whole nine yards. Um, next issue uh, was wrapping my vice boards that I used to hold the cedar board down. The, the two by fours and stuff that got stuck to the epoxy. Had I wrapped it in Tyvek tape, that wouldn't have been any issue at all. It turned out, but that was another issue I had to come across and adjust. Um, I dealt with, because of how I poured it, I dealt with equalization issues. You know, um, I'm, I'm not sure of the physics terms off the top of my head, but basically because one side of the cedar board when I was trying to do that separation like it did, where the purple part that turned out at the end, where it was supposed to be black on top and bottom, and then I had the blues in the center, well, it seeped under the cedar board. That was a nightmare. I ended up cheating with silicone and shit like that. There's chunks of silicone that are actually in the epoxy that... I sanded it well enough, I made it look good, and unless you know where you're looking, chances are you won't spot it. But, if you give it a hard look over, you might actually find where there's little pieces of silicone floating in the epoxy. First project issues, you know, those are the things that come up. So, this conclusion's getting pretty long here, but I, I really want to make sure to cover everything. Mounting the headboard, that was a nightmare. I... Uh, some of you out there might know better things with mounting. To line them holes up, to drill holes in that headboard, and then figure out where it's going to line up, because obviously I had to have um, anchors or whatever in the epoxy, which, mind you, it makes you nervous as hell when you're drilling into the epoxy board that you're already happy enough you didn't crack. Now you don't want to fuck it up. So you drill them anchor points well now you got to figure out where the holes are going to go and and i guess now that i think of it had i done something like before i drilled the anchor holes on the epoxy i could have drilled the holes in the headboard and then somehow laid the headboard in a way that i could access the back of it so i could actually use a sharpie and draw where each of those drilled holes were and then put the anchors into the headboard if you understand what I mean by that, um, that could have been a different way, but being that these are heavy pieces, I mean, it's a, almost probably an 80 pound headboard and another 65 pounds on the epoxy. I actually weighed the epoxy, 65 pounds, the epoxy piece itself. That headboard is probably well over 150 pounds by the time we're all said and done. So um, maybe not well over, but about 150 pounds. Uh, the filler pieces. So. I don't believe I actually covered how I filled in the sides, but I used a chunk of plywood um, to fill in the sides because I didn't make it the exact size of what I popped off that headboard to fit it into. Um, so the filler pieces that I used were actually, they had probably about that much wood that I had to take off. Um, used chisels and different things to make it blend. Um, it didn't blend perfectly to what I wanted, but I, I went with a more rustic look. I have a rustic preference, so I used chains and different things to mark up the wood more so it looked like it blended better. Um, but it was a nightmare of lots and lots of work because I couldn't get an orbital sander in there without, like, because I was using the edge of an orbital sander to take some of it off, but that also wears out the sandpaper faster, it's things like that. And then you start hitting edges and yeah, orbital sander just did not fit in there very well. Maybe if you had a belt sander, you could take it off faster. I don't have a belt sander. I had a detail sander that also does not fit in there. I mean, we were talking, it had about this much space in between the epoxy and the side piece of wood that was actually raised up that I kept on hooking on. Um, different things that I marked. So there's that. Um, you might, so where I'm saying the solve to that filler is you might take some of the chunks of wood off the 
get it get it closer to fitting before you actually glue the the plywood down in there to fill it get it more even it makes things so much easier um know that stain can fill holes so if you have a little pinholes in the wood and stuff like that where where you're trying to fill in and you're using wood glue wood glue doesn't look as good because it's super smooth and i was going for a rustic look you know that what i mean um so use some of your stain you you can kind of like you'll see what i mean make sure you're paying attention to what's under i now have to figure out ways to get wood glue out of my carpet in a apartment that i'm not going to stay in for life so i'm probably gonna have to pay for new carpet if i don't make the five-year expiration on the carpet dating so anyway overall when all said and done here save up some money to work on a project like this um, i'm not saying that you have to spend a lot but it's going to cost you a couple thousand so that is a lot to some people that's a lot to me um but save up some money so you can do it how you want to do it if you're doing some sort of big project like a headboard it's going to cost a lot coffee table wouldn't have cost me nearly as much i could have probably done it for less than a grand to be honest um, because the wood would probably be my biggest cost. I'd use a lot less epoxy, things like that. Um, pouring it into the headboard, if you're trying to mount something into something. In a headboard case, I was worried about having the anchors, like I had said, but having poured it into the actual headboard so it matched exactly may have been easier. Um, I'm not sure how I would make sure that it doesn't pop out because I wouldn't trust the epoxy to adhere to the wood well enough to keep it on there. But if you guys have ideas on that, I, it would have definitely fit better had I poured it into the actual head headboard first. Um, so it shaped to the headboard. But yeah, these are all things that I could have done differently. I love the way it turned out. Um, the dimension of rustic i used screwdrivers to create like looks you can use nails you can use chains different things to put pitting in your wood that can all make it look rustic i did not do that to the cedar i did it to the headboard surrounding it to kind of give it a rustic look on the inner um in those cases a weighted mallet worked best um, yeah I think that pretty well covers it. Throw the questions you have down in the comment section, please. And as always, this is your boy, Wisco Madman. I appreciate any like I get on this video. If you liked it, definitely hit that like button. If you're on Rumble, hit the Rumble button. Thank you guys for commenting, sharing, and subscribing. You can always check me out on Twitter, Instagram, Clapper, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, TikTok basically any platform most people can think of i am more than likely on it as wisco madman i appreciate y'all watching me on this project and i'll catch you on the next one peace